Good morning and thanks for joining us today um, from to look at some attentive way to look at secure SD1. Um, I'm delighted to be joined today by Rafe from Cato Networks who will be looking at some of the current challenges that businesses are facing with their um, with their WAN and you know and, and different approaches they can take in order to reduce costs, reduce complexity and increase the security um, of their network. Uh, my name is Shona Bradshaw um, and I'll just do, be doing a brief intro before handing over to Rafe. Uh, so just to give you a bit of an agenda for today's session, um, I'll do a very short intro to Bytes. Many of you know us already, so I will keep it exceptionally brief, I do promise. Uh, before looking at you know some of the challenges of a traditional network setup, uh, Rafe will then be taking um, the audience through you know, a new model for, for the WAN, introducing Cato Cloud, and the services that they can provide in solutions they can provide in order to, to support that new model and, and talk a little bit around enhancing the security and user experience as well. We will then have an interactive Q&A at the end. So a little bit of housekeeping for today's session. Attendee lines are on mute throughout the presentation. However, we will do a Q&A at the end. So please do post those questions via the chat or questions box. Um, you know, we welcome them in order to have a really interactive question and answer session at the end. We will keep today's um, discussions to strategy and solutions, and we won't be talk doing any commercials on this particular session. However, we will, um, you know, welcome those questions after the webinar via your Bytes account manager. Uh, we are recording today's session so that you can share the, the information widely within your businesses. And lastly, a quick request from me, um, in order to make sure that these sessions hit the mark for you technically and content-wise, please do take just a couple of seconds at the end of the webinar to fill in a very short six-question feedback survey. Just enables us to improve the sessions we do and make sure that they continue to be relevant to you. So, who are bytes? Uh, so Bytes are the security specialist reseller within the um, Bytes Technology Group. We were purchased by Bytes in 2011. And what we aim to do is to marry up the, bring the best of both worlds between the agility and insight and personal approach you would expect from the smallest specialist reseller with the resources and the scale and, and the capabilities of a large global group. We're exceptionally proud and we really stand on the technical expertise that we have developed and that we offer in-house. We have a variety of different fully accredited engineers and account managers and offer a full suite of technical services and support around the technologies that we provide. What that's allowed us to build up is, is really strong relationships and partnerships with some of the best of breed technologies out there, which in addition to technical delivery expertise, allows us to offer real commercial value to customers out there to make sure they are getting the best returns from their investments and those technologies are delivering. We work across the whole spectrum of information security from the network, the next generation firewall and endpoint, traditional security, content security, um, breach and data management, cloud security, and some of the more emerging um, areas that are coming up at the moment, such as secure SD1, such as mobile authentication security, um, such as GNL, et cetera. So, that, so that's where we're really moving to and, and helping customers look and, and scope out their business at the moment. So what do we do um, and what do we offer to customers? So we aim to be that, that extension of your in-house technical team that will allow you to focus really on what you're, good, you're best at. We can help businesses with security strategy development, technology mapping, market reviews. We provide training and knowledge transfer services. We have in-house direct-to-engineer support 24-7. We also offer a variety of different technology delivers delivery, installation, maintenance, and project planning services. So essentially, with a backbone that will help you get the most value and it, as quickly as possible from the technology investments that you make. So why are we talking to businesses about a new one? Why, why are we speaking about Secure SD1 at the moment? Really, the, the crux of it is it was very simple or simpler to secure securely connect your organization to the resources it needed when you had predictable traffic flows from branches to data centers. However, the, the whole technology model in the industry has completely changed 
cloud, mobility, you know, increased breaches, et cetera, et cetera. The, the market and the, the scenario and the networks are becoming increasingly complex and difficult to manage traffic and difficult to, to ensure both security and um, ease of administration and ease of service for users. There are known challenges with traditional one and, and MPLS setup reliability, uh, you know, the actual cost and overlay in appliances and having a need, the need for distributed security appliances across multiple branches, you know, the, 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 the capabilities to support and, and ensure a high quality of service with mobile and, and cloud users. So what we want to start talking to businesses about is what the alternatives are. So today's session is designed to take you through some of the latest tools, the latest tactics, and the latest strategies that Cato, as a pioneer in cloud fast and and in and in you know a new new network model, can help and can can sort of set your minds to be thinking about to to look at a different approach. With that in mind, um, all that it remains for me to do is to hand over to Ray, who will go into some more detail around some of the challenges and the businesses they're facing and some of the approaches that you can take in order to resolve and, and uh, um, you know, ameliorate those, those challenges. Thank you. Over to Ray. Okay. Thanks, Anna. Right, uh, Shana, everybody, hopefully you can see my screen. Yes, we can. I'm going to mute off now so there aren't any background. Thank there you very much, off. Shana, for the, uh, for the introduction. And uh, uh, good morning and uh, welcome, everybody. <clears throat> so today I'm going to take you through the, uh, the, the Cato solution. And um, before we start, I'm just going to address the sort of areas that we play in. So basically, uh, Cato provide a, a global backbone, which is um, designed to be an MPLS replacement. Um, we use SD-WAN technology in the deployment of that solution and combined in the cloud that we've created, we also have full security services so we can act as a, uh, a firewall in the cloud for you. And the latest Bart Gartner catchphrase phrase is a software defined perimeter, which basically um, allows you to, to migrate away from a, a hardware or an appliance based solution to basically a cloud based uh, solution, which allows you to define the perimeter in a much more granular fashion. So um, I think most of you uh, are on this call have probably heard of uh, Checkpoint uh, Technologies, um, also Imperva and Encapsula. Uh, the founders of our company, Shlomo Kramer and Gershat, um, have always been at the forefront of security technologies and uh, have successfully floated uh, their own companies. And uh, those, those companies are now on the NASDAQ worth billions. Uh, a couple of years ago, they spotted a uh, basically a gap in the market which was created by the application of SD-WAN technology and how that now required uh, extra security technologies to be able to actually deploy SD-WAN. So what they did is they went and borrowed uh, some money off some, uh, some top-notch investors and they decided to build out a, uh, a global network, the POPs. So it's our own private network and uh, each one of these POPs is, uh, is connected over multiple tier one uh, telecommunications providers. The POPs themselves run an integrated networking and security stack, uh, which is completely proprietary and is designed by ourselves in, in Israel. Um, so far, uh, in the last 18 months, we've, uh, we've acquired about 200 or so customers, and we currently have thousands of global locations connected to our network. What's very important here is, is that uh, we have a net promoter score of uh, 68 at the moment. So I don't know if you know much about net promoter scores, but generally it ranges from minus 100 to plus 100. And if you look at um, most of these sort of traditional players within the telecommunications market, they would probably not score more than 20 or 30 or so. Um, I know that HP is around 30, Cisco is around 40. Um, it even, even beats Apple's uh, net promoter score as well. So, so far we've been there. Uh, very successful in terms of servicing our customers. And we'll look at some reference sites a bit later on. So now we're just gonna have a look at the problem that we're actually solving in the real world. So for probably the last 15, 20 years, as long as I can remember, uh, most networks have been designed on a sort of hub and spoke type design. And this red line here represents the, the network perimeter, which is created by the firewalls. 
But thanks to our good friends, Jeff Bezos and, and, and everybody else who have created infrastructure as a service, um, that, uh, that, that paradigm, if you like, has now been changed quite significantly over the last five to 10 years. So no longer do we have static offices. We now have uh, basically um, virtual offices. We have branches. Um, we have globalization because that's seen as one of the best ways of addressing um, uh, basically increasing market share and, and profitability. And of course, a lot of people like to uh, either roam the globe or they like to work from home. So there's been a lot of emphasis on supporting and enabling mobile users uh, out there in, in the networks. So um, the, uh, the knee-jerk reaction to all of these demands placed upon the network is basically to throw more and more technology at solving these point solutions. And, and that type of technology could be application acceleration type devices, could, could be uh, black boxes for people to VPN into for remote users. Um, it's, it's definitely um, all hosts of, of, of uh, security appliances. And, and basically it's a market which the founders really helped create. And now what they're saying is, is that um, within five to 10 years, these appliances should be obsolete and everything should be actually managed and, and configured in the cloud. So the one is incompatible with today's business needs. If you have a look at MPLS, um, MPLS multi-protocol label switching was the, was the savior of the carriers about 15 years ago, when basically um, IP enabled voice destroyed their, 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 their voice networks. And the only way they could recover is, is by creating this, uh, this global network, which, which could link companies together and provide quality of service for all of their latency sensitive type applications, making sure they get through and making sure that uh, traffic that didn't, wasn't latency sensitive uh, would be given a, a, a lesser priority. Now, the problem with MPLS is, is it's great, it's back to back and it's SLA, but it is very capacity constrained, especially when you start throwing more and more internet backball traffic over that circuit. And I don't know if you've ever tried to actually um, increase the bandwidth of an MPLS circuit or, 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 or certainly upgrade the circuit, but it can take months to do that from the carriers because what they're in effect providing on these point-to-point -point circuits is, is tail circuits from other carriers and, and then all, uh, utilizing their backbones to provide the, the core service. So a lot of companies out there have decided that, um, yes, we're gonna take the chance on the latency sensitive stuff and we're just gonna create a whole bunch of, of VPNs by putting firewall services out at data, uh, data centers and, and branches and, and hoping that the data and, and the round trip delays are such that it doesn't actually interfere with any of the latency sensitive traffic. Now that's, that's all well and good, but at the end of the day, um, MPLS and, and VPNs haven't really addressed how we're actually gonna access all of the cloud-based applications because most of the companies I talk to have a cloud-first strategy nowadays and they fully intend to actually make everything in terms of their applications available by the cloud. And um, we still, for, for mobile users, we, we still provide them with black boxes which VPN into a branch, route traffic down an MPLS link and break out on probably a tier two type interconnection from a data center or an HQ. So typically the type of user experience they have is not good. So along came SD-WAN and um, that sort of, uh, that revolution probably started about uh, five or six years ago in, 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 its, in its entirety. But really what SD-WAN was, was designed to do in this particular case was, was basically augment the MPLS circuits which are, which are already in place by using cheap internet capacity to overspill non-latency sensitive type applications. So the SD-WAN devices themselves are all active-active, which is a big change for, for WAN-type technologies. And the SD-WAN devices themselves actually look at the underlying link quality and then decide, based on the quality of service of, that, of, of, of the application, which, which packet that route should take down that line. And um, on top of that, SD-WAN now provides a lot of sort of SD application acceleration type devices and they're trying to mimic MPLS but on a much longer internet circuit which by its very nature is, 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 is going to be unreliable in terms of what capacity it has during any particular time of the day because generally they're between 10 and 50 to 1 sort of contended. And of course SD-WAN actually doesn't attach the appliance sprawl in terms of the VPNs themselves and doesn't offer a solution there as well. Uh, it can offer a solution to actually access cloud-based applications but um, the alternatives in terms of security are that you use security, which is provided by the actual infrastructure as a service, which isn't always the best way of doing things. Or you then have to go out and buy some sort of cloud-based type securities from the likes of Zscaler to add, add to the, the SD-WAN solution, which creates another layer of management. Also, SD-WAN actually doesn't affect mobile users at all, that the solution doesn't touch them at all. So these, these guys out there are being very much left to themselves. 
and uh, they still are happy, you know, creating the shadow IT environment as they get uh, more and more disheartened with the use of corporate applications and, and the connectivity they get with head offices. So I guess this is the, the, the lead up to the Eureka moment. And the Eureka moment for the, for the founders of the company was really, wouldn't it be great if all of our physical, virtual, mobile and cloud data centers were actually linked to the same network? So all the traffic tra 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 um, uh, traverses the same network. And then on top of that, obviously, um, you would want to provide that as an MPLS alternative. So now you can see the logic and the reason behind actually developing this loud cloud based, this large cloud based infrastructure, uh, which costs a lot of money. But um, you have to be able to offer this quality of service, which we believe, especially on long haul type links where the round trip latency is, is, is getting you know, above 80 to 100 type milliseconds. But it didn't just stop there because it's, it's great to have this, but the challenge will always be security. So with their backgrounds, they decided, look, the best thing to do would actually build in an integrated security stack into the networking stack on the pod that you're running in that, in that data center. And the, and the benefits of running that security in, in, in the pod in the data center is, is basically the, the security is always up to date. It's zero maintenance. You'll also never find any, any uh, black spots or you'll never find any capacity constraints because the infrastructure was designed to be able to handle as much encrypted data and then decrypting that data as possible at wire speed to actually um, off, offer the, you know, the latencies you need on, 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 on the latency sensitive applications. So, and of course, once you have your security and you have your networking stack all built into the same pop, you will then have a single view and a single unified network management policy for all users and all locations enforced at every location on the network. So this is a big change from, from, from MPLS and VPNs because now you actually get visibility of users and applications traversing your cloud in real time. So when there is an issue with the network, whether it be network or security based, you're immediately alerted to that and you can actually pinpoint where those problems are and who that problem resides with, whether it's Cato or whether it's the final mile into our network. So that then brings me on to the next slide. So we're now gonna have a look at networking, security and policy in a little bit more detail. So from a, uh, from a networking point of view, um, we're now, uh, the, the Cato Cloud is represented by this rectangular box here. These commons are the pops within our network. And as you can see, each pop within our network has a tier one breakout, very much like express route into the internet. So if it's not traffic, which is being routed from a pop to pop, pop um, site to site type VPN, it is actually routed out of, of the pop that the, the traffic hits. So this, this network is all completely SLA backed. It's five nines availability. And we currently have points of presence uh, around the world in actually um, 42 locations, I believe, today. It's gone up by three in the last few days. Um, we're actually aiming to increase the number of props and double the number of pops out there at the moment, because what we're trying to do is get as close to our customers as, as humanly possible so that the, the final mile or the internet connected circuit where we use the SD-WAN to, to basically optimize uh, throughput is kept as short as possible. So we're trying to get it down from around 20 milliseconds to around five or 10 milliseconds, which, we can, which means we can actually then put, put a much better MPLS replacement into the network. So the next question is, is how do you connect to the Cato cloud? Okay, so I'm gonna run you with the various ways of connecting onto the cloud. The simplest way is you actually just make a call to our IP address on, on one of the pops via your firewall that you have in situ at the moment. That's the quickest way of getting onto the network. However, doing that will not offer you the quality of service for the applications and will not be actually detecting any underlying link quality problems for you. So the best way of connecting to the network is to use something called a Cato socket. Now, I want to make a big distinction here. The Cato socket is not an appliance. So we are not trying to sell you a hardware appliance at the moment. That socket is actually a logical extension, if you like, of the actual pop it's connected to. So all of the software, new feature releases, bug fixes, everything comes from that pop. So it is actually a zero touch piece of equipment. So if you ship that pop to site with a 4G um, router on the back of it, um, you have the IP address of, 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 the, of the pop plugged into there, then you plug it in and basically the, the Cato network fires up and now you're a fully connected member of that network. So it really is as simple as that. <clears throat> now, the reason you want to use a Cato socket is, is first of all, uh, the first use case is obviously to replace MPLS. But usually before you replace MPLS, as there's uh, capacity constraints on there and obviously the circuit probably uh, has, has a two or three year type contract on it, we, we put it in to augment MPLS. 
So basically, we're, 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 we're using standard SD WAN functionality over those Cato sockets, and we're doing policy based routing based on underlying link quality. And obviously, the MPLS link with this RJ45 is plugged into the socket. We can have a quick look at what a, a very basic 1500 socket looks like here. And then the ADSL circuit is plugged into WAN2. And, um, and, and, your, and, and your switches are plugged into LAN, LAN 1 and LAN 2. Um, the actual Cato socket uh, does act as a complete replacement for any firewall or routing type functionality you might have at that particular location, which obviously removes a layer of complexity from your network straight away. Um, the other thing that SD-WAN does for you as well is um, application acceleration. And we're not going to go into too much detail about this on this call because it's, it's a fairly complex subject, but we use standard uh, application acceleration techniques like, for instance, forward error correction, where, um, where the POP acts as a, uh, as a proxy for the TCP packets and resends um, any drop packets um, by, by mirroring them or down another link instantaneously so that the whole connection doesn't complete without any lost, lost packets at the destination site. Of course, the positive and, and, and the user benefit of using the Cato socket rather than an appliance is that when the MPLS link expires, it's now possible for you to route all of your traffic over the Cato network, including all your voice and latency sensitive Citrix type applications as well. So this is the big difference and where we sort of um, step now ahead of the competition in terms of the other 50 SD-WAN type providers out there. The other ways you're going to need to connect into our network uh, are obviously with data centers and mobile users. We try and make this as painless as possible. So in terms of cloud data, center, uh, 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 cloud data centers and applications residing in those data centers, we can use a few ways of connecting. We can just connect with the firewall they provide us and point that towards the, the IP address of the POP site, or we can use something called a virtual socket, um, which is a virtual version of the Cato socket, which spins up on an ESX machine and is very simple to install, but will give you full SD-WAN functionality now to control this link into our backbone. So you'll be getting all the quality of service and, 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 and link degradation uh, uh, mitigation type techniques that we apply on the, on the MPLS links. The last and the fourth way of connecting to the network and the people that we haven't forgotten about because we feel these people are, are, are very important and that's a growing community of people in the network of the mobile users. And the way that we address this is with something called a Cato client. Now this Cato client sits on any operating system. So whether it's going to be Apple, Microsoft, Unix, whatever, it sits on any operating system on any device. And it's an, a fire up um, VPN when you want to connect to the network and always, always on VPN. And basically that VPN connects into the POP site where that client is, is, is closest. So that client might be accessing an Office 365 application in Ireland, for instance, but he might be in Jakarta. So, so, the, so the Cato client would connect to our, pop, our closest POP to Jakarta, which is probably Singapore, and then that packet is routed all the way across our tier one backbone with very low packet loss, and then exits the network at the Irish POP straight into the Office 365 Azure data center, which we might be co-located with it over an express route type connection. So typically those roaming mobile users will experience um, uh, maybe, maybe 20, 30 times better type performance than they would do if they were VPNing into a black box at a branch and then that traffic was being routed to a head office and broken out over an internet connection with URL filtering there. And you'll see why we don't need to do that in, in a little while. So swiftly moving on, um, we're just going to take a quick look at uh, how we uh, optimize the, the final mile and the backbone, but not spending too much time on it because it can get quite complicated. But basically, active active links. So you can have um, a, a business quality 10 to 1 contended ADSL circuit. You can have a, a 50 to 1 virgin type um, uh, uh, ADSL circuit connected in there. And then the SD-WAN device and the POP actually look after all the policy-based routing and quality of service and packet loss mitigation. So um, the difference between using our network and somebody else's is the actual POPs themselves act as the TCP proxies. So we very quickly resend any drop packets on these, on these particular lines here. So even if, even if those internet circuits have a particularly bad quality, it's, it's, it's very usual for us to actually improve it quite dramatically so that we can actually offer a full end-to-end -end MPLS type service. Of course, with the middle mile, because we're traversing the packet over probably only a single tier one internet, I mean, a single tier one provider over our POPs, we're going to see very low packet loss and we're going to see very low latency. So what we're going to be doing then is actually increasing the size of our packets, our TCP packet sizes between our POPs and our private network, 
increasing the throughput quite dramatically, even above something like MPLS, which doesn't use these type of techniques. And then as we just discussed, data centers connected to our POPs or basically connected over a tier one express route type connection. Um, anyone on the Cato network will have the fastest possible route to that infrastructure as a service and, and basically should see um, you know, 30, 40 times the type of improvement in performance and access in their circuits, especially if they're mobile users and they're roaming the globe and um, they could be a long way from those infrastructure as a service points of presence. Um, and of course, we apply the same techniques on the final mile as well. So security. Right, so this is the bit where we really do, um, you know, start to leave the competition and we really start to differentiate ourselves and become extremely disruptive in the marketplace. So built within each one of our POPs and the Cato Cloud POPs are again represented by these comma marks here. The cloud is actually the rectangle. I'm not sure why we're using rectangles, but we do. And of course, the, the secure internet breakout uh, at each site. So included in each POP, we have a full next generation application layer firewall. So we're actually breaking and de-encrypting de the packet down. And we're actually looking inside of that packet, looking at the application, looking at the users. So uh, in terms of reporting, you get a much richer feature set. Also included with the security is a full URL filtering uh, at every one of our POP sites. So um, it, it's typical uh, URL filtering, 20, 25 type um, websites, which you might go to or not might, might want your, your mobile users not to go to. So that include things like gambling. You can actually block on a URL type basis, single URL type basis, but we have a whole security team keeping those, those, uh, those websites up to date. So as we see new gambling websites out there come up there, we add them to those, to those subsets. Uh, and that's all included within our service. And we'll talk about how we actually price this uh, a little bit more at the end. Um, what's not included with the connection to the Cato network, and uh, they are add-ons, are the advanced threat protection, so that's anti-malware, antivirus, and IPS type stuff. So, so the reason for that is this, this software, um, this proprietary software runs on very, very powerful servers. And we have to basically de-encrypt that packet and have a look for malignant type malware, which might not have broken out of the command and control type stage already, and, and then re-encrypt those packets and do that at wire speed. Uh, which is something very difficult to do if you're using appliances to do this, but we have the, the infrastructure and the processing power within the cloud to do this, but offer that as a service as well. And then of course, you've got the full network forensics and you can take all of these security reports, send them out to a syslog or a SIEM type device so that uh, you've got full reporting and, um, uh, and compliance. So what really changes here is because we've integrated security as well as is we actually um, have a much holistic view of the network. So this is what enables us to actually see everything traversing the network and then relate those security events to perhaps networking events which are occurring on the network. So if we see a brownout or, or a slowdown in a particular internet connectivity from a particular site, which affects a particular application like voice, we'll be able to correlate that together and we will determine what the problem is and what the resolution for that, for that problem is. Uh, it might mean that you have to go and get another internet provider service there or put a 4, 4G device in there for backup, but at least it gives you the options and it gives you the visibility so you know what's going on. Um, a lot of people always ask, how do you, I mean, if you're not breaking out into the internet and you're doing site to site, that's very easy to set up site to site type um, connections uh, for, for everybody. And it's very simple to, you know, to using a standard firewall. The fact that the whole URL is, is very Apple-esque. And if you want to see the, uh, the URL and actual action in more greater detail, I would suggest you just go to YouTube and type in Cato and you'll see a labyrinth of, uh, of, of uh, videos on there. Which, uh, which show you how to configure the network and how we can get more improvement in performance, but it certainly runs you through the whole interface itself. So lastly, but not least, is the policy. So uh, this is very important because um, all that information which is, which is recorded by the Cato Network Management Interface, that's the interface that you'll be using, is, is, is a fully managed uh, and, and a fully, um, multi, uh, it's a multi-tenanted interface which means you get full visibility, but you can now outsource that management interface to a third party provider like an MSP or an enterprise IT company who can basically monitor that network for you on a 24 by seven basis. So you can also allow them to move admins and changes for you as well and take full control of the network and provide that as a purely managed service to you, which includes the Cato Cloud and the, the last mile internet links as well. So in this way, we're actually providing a complete um, MPLS replacement, but with all of the um, fault and security stuff, which which the carriers would would 
duly suffer with, with providing at the moment unless they actually form strategic partnerships with other security companies, which again for them adds another layer of complexity for them as well. So really what Cato are trying to, sell, what they're trying to solve are six particular uh, issues all in one solution. And what I always say is, is any one of these six particular uh, solutions could be enough commercially to justify using this, this, this Cato solution. So the first is obviously an affordable NPLS alternative, and that's a very demonstrable thing. Um, you know, the NPLS, if, it, if it's too expensive and not performing and very difficult to upgrade and get good service on, it makes it, makes it logical to look at the Cato solution. But also included in that, and, and if they have deployed NPLS, they've probably already de deployed some SD-WAN type functionality or application acceleration devices out there as well. And of course, with the Cato solution, there is no point in investing in any any appliances anymore, and it actually removes the need for any of those HD WAN devices completely because the Cato socket will replace that functionality. Uh, <clears throat> obviously, if you're using firewalls um, and uh, you haven't gone down the MPLS route, the Cato solution provides a complete firewall. Uh, managed service in the cloud. So you can eliminate all of your internet facing firewalls. I say internet facing firewalls, they are no longer needed. So if you ha have small branch offices with just a single firewall and a router and a switch, you will now just be uh, uh, defined as a switch and a Cato socket, which will do the routing and the firewall for you as well. So, um, and of course it's not an appliance, it's not something you look after. So basically you're just looking after the switching in that environment. So the logical thing for us to do in the future would obviously be to integrate switching into that service as well. If you're already using security as a service in the cloud, um, obviously Cato provide a complete solution to that as well, which removes the need for another point solution if you have deployed SD-WAN and, and Z-Scaler type uh, solutions. You may have heard of um, the CASVs, as they're called, the Cloud Access Security Brokers. That's another breed of, uh, of, of Gartner's uh, security brokers in the cloud. Um, these people, they basically redirect your traffic to, uh, to their cloud where they scrub that traffic and uh, remove viruses and anti-malware. And then they point that traffic back out to the site it's meant to go to. Um, it's great technology, but of course, with the Cato solution, we're actually solving that with our cloud as well. So again, it's another point solution that you don't need to look at or deploy in your network. And as, uh, as most of the people I speak to uh, will, will verify, they're already probably using some sort of client, a VPN client out there, uh, which is great, but um, does that VPN client provide that uh, mobile user with the complete uh, networking and security policies of the organization? So, um, and, and does that Cato client provide the, um, the performance needed to run the applications that that client needs? And I think it's clear today that um, most networks don't, and, and that's because shadow IT has grown so enormously um, from the use of, of, of mobile clients using their own applications and doing things their own way because they can't get on with the corporate IT. So what we're trying to do is basically improve that performance to a, to a level where corporate IT solves all their problems, they don't need to look outside at other applications to solve their business needs. Okay, I've run through that pretty quick. I'm I'm now going to uh, have a look at some reference case studies. Um, they might not all be applicable to you, but they'll give you an idea of, uh, of the type of solutions and, and the type of problems we can solve in, in real life cases. So the first one, Pet Lover Centre, uh, is, is actually um, a retail a company based in Singapore. And they have 40, uh, sorry, 65 locations in total in Singapore, which sounds like a lot for a small company. I find that hard to get my head around. But they also have 40 franchises, um, third party companies, who basically want to transact their EPOS data over their network, but they're actually not part of, of, of Pet Lover Center. So they'll be branded by a different name. So what they did is they looked at the Cato solution and uh, they take very, seri uh, very seriously this uh, security out in the Far East, and probably more so than we actually even do in, in, in Europe and, 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 and in the UK, because if retail companies out here get, get, get caught breaking the law or they, uh, they lose customer data, they tend to want to pay the fines for in the Far East, they don't. So these guys, they wanted to actually have a fully implemented IPS and anti-malware solution, and they didn't want the hassle of deploying edge firewalls at every one of their branches. So with the Cato solution, it was very easy for them to build the complete entire network by using the Cato sockets to, to replace that functionality. And of course, the socket is zero touch, so it doesn't need any maintenance and software updates. Uh, it can just be shipped to site and plugged in and used. And that then enabled them to basically provide a complete network for their, for their own private network, but bring in all of their franchisee sites 
but only allow them access for the EPOS data which can be transacted by pet lovers retail and keep everything completely secure for them. Hence, I say why the Cato management application is very much multi-tenanted and allows you to bring in uh, new acquisitions that you might buy for your company or third party providers who provide services where it's important to be connected to your network and have email, but you don't want to let them get to the crown jewels. This particular uh, reference case here, Fisher and Company, um, this was very much uh, a reduction in MPLS costs. So uh, this one's very simple to get around. Uh, they were using WAN optimizations devices. They were spending roughly 325K a year dollars on MPLS. Um, they used um, a mixture of firewalls and VPNs as well. There was, it was fairly complex in terms of configuring firewalls and routers and WAN optimization and, and with high costs as well. So the Cato solution actually reduced that cost by a third. So basically um, after the first quarter, they were making money. Um, the last mile you can see was considerably more expensive than the Cato type crowd solution, but it allowed them, allowed them to basically provide an MPLS alternative, get rid of the VPNs and bring everybody into a single network and increase WAN capacity at the same time. The next one is a uh, is actually a UK financial company. Now, I'm not sure if they're in UK because they've decided to offshore themselves. Uh, I think off in the Isle of Man, probably for tax reasons. But uh, but these guys here, um, th their issue was actually they had multiple infrastructures as a service, and the users are complaining that they had to log on and log off to all of these different cloud-based networks before they could get access. And what the Cato solution brought with them was basically all these clouds connected real time into the network, which they could log on to with their username and passwords and keep all of their sessions up at the same time. So not only solving the MPLS and the VPN issues here as well, but, but they're solving the access to the, to the cloud data centers. And then the, uh, the last one here, AdRoll technology, this is very much driven by um, a labyrinth of, of, of mobile users who were roaming the globe and had very, very, very poor uh, uh, performance um, when they roamed the globe. So even for email type applications, but certainly for any voice and, 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 um, and latency sensitive type traffic. So um, this is what the network uh, looks like now. Many of these people here are mobile users and they're, VP they're, accessing, they're using our VPN to access the network. And of course, all of their applications and, and, and all their resources are freely available and, uh, and open, to their, open to them on our network with the security policies in place. So really, this is the, uh, the final slide here um, before I uh, hand back to Shona. Um, I just want to run through, if, if you look here on the right hand side, these are the six classic type use cases where I'm looking to tick the boxes for potential clients. Um, usually one or two of these use cases is enough um, commercially to make the, the, uh, the, uh, the proposition attractive. Um, just a little bit of really on pricing here. Um, everybody looks at the solution and thinks, wow, there's some, some great use cases here. How do we price it? Um, we try and make this as simple as possible as well in our apple way as well. And the way that we price it is, is very simply, it's just per connection onto our network. So basically for, um, for all physical, virtual and, and uh, um, branch and head office type locations, um, we have tiers of bandwidth, which range from 0 to 25, maybe 25 to 50, all the way up to a gig. And we basically charge on a monthly basis for a yearly contract, which includes the socket as well. So we don't actually sell the hardware, we give it to you. Um, that hardware can be deployed in, in, in effect in VRRP as well. And we have uh, other hardware which has redundant power as well. But, but generally that hardware is included. So all you're paying is a monthly recurring revenue for a connection into our network. And with that monthly recurring revenue, you get for free almost the URL um, at the gateway uh, with the full um, uh, breakout, tier one breakout from, from all of our pop sites and the application firewall as well. So um, just one single fee for a year's contract. Um, if anyone's interested and they want to have a look at um, threat protection and anti-malware and, and IPS, we can have a little bit of a talk about that later, but probably better to bring that online and have a one-to-one -one conversation about the, uh, the costs involved there. But they're not enormous. We've, we've tried to make it as scalable as possible and as cost-effective as possible, but it's, it's very simple to price up. So if you have ticked one or two of these boxes here, perhaps three of these boxes, you think the pricing is very simple and um, it would be cost effective to move to us, then I'd be happy to have a conversation after this or, or set up a separate meeting. Okay, thank you very much for your time today. Um, Shona, are you still on the line there? I am indeed. Hello. Yeah, are you okay you for me? me to hand back to you now, Shona, or take any questions from the, uh, from the audience? 
that's fine. And um, uh, just like the audience, too, um, if you've got any questions for me, anything that you've seen that you would like further clarification on, or any sort of technical questions, etc., please do take time now just to post them via the questions box or the chat box. I'll monitor that and pose them to Rafe um, on your behalf so that we can we can uh, have those answered as you are. So if you just um, post them, take a couple of seconds, post them via the, the questions box, I will post them to um, pose them to Rafe um, just now. I just want to, whilst you do so and you're busy typing, I just want to thank you all very much for your time and attending this morning. I appreciate it is, um, you know, everyone is, are very busy in their roles and um, so to take the time to have a look at something new is absolutely fantastic. Also thank Reeve and very much for his time and his detailed and thorough presentation showcasing some of their solutions and the, the need for for the, the new approach to, to look at a, a wide area network. And um, so I'm just going to give everyone about 30 seconds see if there's any more questions um, otherwise Please do feel free to pose them to your account manager so those are commercial mates there as well. I'd be more than happy to, or you know, drop me a line and I'd be more than happy to share those questions out with, with your individual account managers as well. Great. So any questions out there from uh, any of the participants at all? Yeah. Are we all good? <laughs> so I haven't had I haven't had any questions come through, but as we were more than happy to pause and be your bike camp under um, you know, at the end, um, you know, after the session. So um we will I will make sure that I share the recording with you all after the session as well. And um, thank everyone for joining us this morning. Thank you all very much for your time. Cool. Thank you. Cheers. <laughs>